Audible lets you enjoy all your audio entertainment in one app. You'll always find the best of what you love or something new to discover. As an Audible member, you can choose one title a month to keep from their entire catalog, including the latest bestsellers and new releases. I am currently listening to Drunkish by Stephanie Wilder-Taylor. I really like Stephanie. And this is a book about leaving alcohol. It's called A A Memoir of Loving and Leaving Alcohol. And I really dig her take on it. She's a funny person, and I love having her voice actually in my ear reading it to me. New members can try Audible free for 30 days. Visit audible.com slash crappens or text crappens to 500-500. Sound the gifting panic alarm. You need to get an amazing gift. Wait, no, the perfect gift. And it needs to say, I'm a thoughtful person. And I appreciate you. And I know exactly what you like. All at the same time. Relax. Now you can use gift mode on Etsy. Gift Mode on Etsy is here to take the stress out of gifting, so you can find the perfect item for anyone and any occasion. It's easy to find gifts made by independent sellers for all the people in your life, like the pickleballer, the jazz fan, the zen seeker, the artist, or the pasta lover. From 90s nostalgia and mixology to reality TV and gaming, there's something for everyone on Etsy. A gifting moment is always around the corner, whether it's a birthday, an anniversary, a holiday, or even just a day to say thank you. Gift Mode on Etsy has you covered. Need to find the perfect gift? Don't panic. Gift easy with Gift Mode on Etsy. From Wondery and Audible comes Class of 88, a new podcast hosted by Will Smith. Before 1988, a lot of people didn't take hip-hop seriously. But hip-hop today touches everything from film to fashion to sports. So what changed? Follow Class of 88 wherever you get your podcasts. Hello and welcome to Watch What Crappens, a podcast about all that crap on Bravo that we just love to talk about. I'm Ben Mandelker, and joining me today is the one and only Mr. Ronnie Karam. Hi, Ronnie. How are you? Hi. What's going on with you? Not much. Just, um, you know, here we are, midweek. It's Banner Pump Rules Day, arguably one of the biggest days of the week for us, especially this week where there's a giant cover story in the New York Times about Tom Sandoval, followed by a giant story about Tom Sandoval in Interview Magazine. So this world is... This world you know, is fucking over. I'm sorry. But, over. Like, are we even making an effort to like maintain a world? Why are you guys writing fucking cover stories about Tom Sandoval? What a loser. Okay, What Get a, a loser. Life. Get, Get a, a life. life. It's been or a rough a day for me. You know, I mean, I was out there in the world earlier. I mean, it was like the L.A. riots out there. What happened? I'm just kidding. Oh. It's just these art. This <laughs> quote from Tom Sandoval is so fucking disgusting. I oh, can't God. believe it. Like comparing his basic ass existence to George so, Floyd. And, can you believe it? I've, I mean, I can believe it. Actually, of course. And you know who can. else could believe it? The people who wrote the article. They could fucking believe it because when it got to this part in the article, you know what? Finish your intro, and I'll go into this article. Well, I can't yeah, let's, believe. Okay. There's a little uh, teaser. Just, just my just my overall note. We need to just stop writing fucking articles about Tom Sandoval. And what are you guys having? Who's that famous photographer for Vanity Fair? Annie Leibovitz. What are we having Annie Leibovitz do the photographs now? Why are you giving him fucking artistic photos worthy of the loot? That was actually the thing that offended me. That actually offended me so much because it's like... It is giving because you know in the in those moments while he's taking that those photos, even though he's saying this bullshit, he's like, "Dude, I look sick in that photo, man. That was like a sick photo shoot." They're giving so, him rock star presents for what? For being a fucking loser and cheating on his fight. I mean, even beyond the being a fucking loser part. I mean, even beyond the cheating on his fucking girlfriend part. What did he do to get in the New York Times magazine? Have some self respect over there, for Christ's sake. I know. Um, and, uh, by the way, they didn't even ask us for a quote. So, like, it's totally bad. Oh, God. Oh, God. Could you imagine? Because speaking of Tom Sandoval, levels of egomaniacal. We're like, why are we in that? <laughs> the day the New York Times actually comes to us for a quote, uh, that will be... 
that will be that will be a thing. Um, so anyway, the time uh, is near. If Tom Sandoval's in the New York Times magazine, it was good enough for us then two years ago at least. I mean, if we're yeah, go well, that's that. what my mom always. My mom is always like, "Well, Ben, you know, New York Times is slowly coming around to reality TV. They just wrote something about what is this Scandoval? I'm like, yes. <laughs> um, so here is the news, everyone. We actually have news to announce today. Big news, double big news. We have added a show to our European tour, in case you didn't already see on our social media. We're going to Dublin. We are going to Dublin. So now we have three shows. It looks like it's only going to be three shows. It's going to be London, Dublin, and Birmingham. Uh, those are all going to be at the end of May for this year. The tickets, I'm so sorry. We said the tickets go on sale today, which is sort of true. The tickets really go on sale on Friday, but there's a Patreon pre-sale that already started this morning. Um, and that's for all three cities. So if you are there in that corner of Europe, or if you just want to visit that corner of Europe, come join us there. We'll be there. It's going to be great. Uh, the show in London is actually part of a comedy festival. There's all sorts of comedians that'll be there at performing. So like come for us, stay for everyone else. I don't know. Uh, but it'll be, it'll be so fun. Some people have been asking if we, if we have a show in Glasgow, which would have been, that would have just been a dream, but unfortunately we could not make Scotland work out on this trip, which of course we want Scotland to work out because, um, all we do have to, we can say mad there. Um, so unfortunately, no Glasgow, I'm sorry, but we do have Dublin and London and Birmingham, and it's going to be fabulous. Tickets at watchwhatcrappens.com. That was the announcement. Also, go get your tickets for the Netflix is a comedy festival that is in May as well. You can find that at Watch What Crappens. Also, this is a video recap, and we do, video, uh, we do bonus episodes every week on Patreon, so go catch those over there. Um, okay, let's get into this. This... Um, well, you want to talk about that article? You want to talk about this New York Times article? So I was saying before, I haven't actually sat down to read it yet because I am very much like Kyle Richards. And this was an article that was in the New York Times uh, magazine section, which means it's a it's like a sit down and read this article. And honestly, I'm a busy person. And also, honestly, do I need to have a sit down and read moment about Tom Sandoval? I'm not sure that I really do. What else do I need to learn? What what nuances am I? Is the New York Times going to tell me that I have not already been able to discern for myself? Um, I will read it, uh, but that's going to be a weekend project for me. So, but did you check it out? I did. Uh, now. As far as reading the whole thing, listen, this is very New York Timesy. It's very verbose. Okay. It goes on and on and on. And it explains what reality TV is to smart people, you know, yeah. because smart people read the New York Times. <laughs> In theory, they do not watch. Vanderpump rules. So it's kind of a condescending article in a way because it's like, this is what reality TV is. And this is what reality TV is like. They did it in a very interesting way. I felt like they kind of wrote it like a reality TV show mm -hmm. article, which was interesting, you know. And uh, they had one of Tom, uh, Tom's PR people who I think from, they were calling it someone from Tom's PR team. From reading this and just knowing Bravo as we do, I'm thinking this was someone who works at Bravo who was there to kind of stop Tom. <laughs> because Either that or someone on Piccolo in his band. <laughs> right. Some high school kid that is getting paid in Cheetos and stage time, you know, and bus tickets to Poughkeepsie or wherever the fuck they're performing <laughs> these days. Poughkeepsie. <laughs> um, so, yeah, there's someone there because after he makes this uh, – comment about George Floyd and all this other stuff, the network starts calling. So <laughs> there's a couple of comments to Riley, who is this person, this PR person, furiously writing comments uh, throughout the interview. Uh, but basically, every time you fast forward through this article to a Tom quote, it is just an absolutely douchebag comment, <laughs> like every single time. You know, he'd grown apart from her, blah, blah, blah. I just needed to get away from the show. I just wanted to not feel watched. I just wanted to take a breath. Oh, um, oh, really? Is that's why he went on stage for the band that's literally called the most extras? You just didn't want to be watched. I get it. I get it. <laughs> yeah. Uh, so let's see. Um, let me just well, get to the. Let's just get to the the quote. Well, shall we? I was about to say. Let's let's actually for anyone who's been living under a rock or just somehow was lucky enough to miss this. 
uh, there was this quote that really went viral yesterday, which honestly I was also very upset about because I felt like yesterday was our moment in the sun because we were getting attention for the fact that Heather Gay unfollowed us, which you can hear about on Crappy Hour. Go listen to that. And I was like, okay, well, you know what? This is our moment in the sun. And then here comes Tom Sandoval to ruin our low-level gossipy story. <laughs> our moment in the sun. That's so sad. <laughs> I know. <laughs> Real Housewife Hunt followed us. Wow. <laughs> um, okay, so this was the quote. So um, I asked Sandoval why he thought the scandal got so big. And he said, I'm not a pop culture historian, really. But I witnessed the O.J. Simpson thing and George Floyd and all these big things, which is really weird to compare to this, I think. But do you think in a weird way it's a little bit the same? No, Tom. <laughs> no, Tom. No. It's not the fucking same. So then the writer says, I looked over at Riley, who was typing furiously on her phone. I think I knew what he meant. He was trying to express the oddity of becoming the symb symbolic center of a nationwide discussion in a major news story. What he communicated instead was something more honest, which is just how much the experience had made him lose perspective. <laughs> which is such a, I love that, such a passive aggressive classic New York Times diss. And it's also just trying to make something so much smarter out of what it actually is. It's like, God forbid yeah. you just call this person a lump of shit. You know what I mean? Like, the writer should have been like, and that's when I started questioning what I'm doing with my life. And when did this fucking newspaper turn into this? And why yeah. did I ever care to work at this fucking dump? You know, <laughs> that I would be sitting here across this piece of shit as an assignment. But instead, they're like waxing poetic about how deep what he said probably really was, you know? I mean, I loved it. To me, that was just like, that's classic New York Times shade. That's how New York Times shades people. Um, I thought... Uh, yeah, it was such a it was such a wild quote. He could have gotten away with maybe comparing it to O.J. Simpson, but when you bring George Floyd into it, it's like, are you like George Floyd was not some sort of tabloid curiosity. <laughs> George Floyd was like a person who died. A, well, I mean, technically in O.J. Simpson that happened too, but a person died and caused worldwide protests and a lot of true reckoning, not reality reckoning. Um, and so for him to elevate himself to that moment is so vainglorious. It's so typical Sandoval, but it's like not even like can't be hilarious. I mean, elevate yourself to like Lorena Bobbitt for crying out loud, but you're not, you're not George Floyd. Like, get over yourself, sir. That is, it was so, it was so tone deaf. So typically Tom Sandoval, it's amazing how this guy continues to keep shooting himself in the foot. And honestly, all he has to do right now is be quiet because like we've said a million times, the audience is ready to turn on Ariana. We already had a lot of people comment, you know, because she won um, a Bravo Liberty of the Year in the crappies. And a lot of people say, oh, really? So getting cheated on just makes you Bravo Liberty of the Year? You know, a lot, we get, there's a lot of that energy out there, which is so obnoxious. <laughs> and all he has to do is just like sit there. And yet he is like, no, I want people to still hate me. Come hate me. Yeah, well, this, he just doesn't know. I mean, the guy's just dumb as a fucking brick. You know what I he mean? Really is. And that's the, you know, that goes back to that old uh, saying that you see spray painted all over Los Angeles. Stop making stupid people famous. This is what you get. You know what I mean? This is what yeah. you get. So this was my favorite part of the article. This is after this. It says, the next day, I was supposed to attend the taping of one of Sandoval's confessional interviews for the show. I was about to get in my car when I received a text from his publicist, Riley's boss. He'd rather you don't attend today, it read. He's not feeling the best. The next morning, I got a call from Baskin. And the day, the, Alex Baskin, the evolution producer guy, the head of this. Not Baskin and Robbins. And the day after that, a Bravo publicist rang me late on a Friday. Some of what Sandoval had said had gotten back to Bravo, and everyone was concerned. What was this? What, what did he say about O.J. Simpson and George Floyd exactly? Maybe <laughs> Sandoval wasn't ready for this. The Bravo publicist asked if I really needed to see him again. Could the network facilitate an interview with one of the show's other stars? Yeah, sure, sure. Uh, he just made a comment about George Floyd. Throw us La La for 10 minutes. <laughs> No. Bravo is uh, regretting very much having Tom Sandoval be untethered in front of a New York Times reporter. Yeah, that's because uh, there's no, you, by the way, you cannot tell me that that Sandoval is going to ever deny a New York Times reporter to sit in uh, on his confessional tapings. Like that is not happening. He will have a New York Times reporter follow him anywhere if he can.
Yeah. Um, and um, he signed up for Vanderpump Rules because he thought people should see what it's like being an L.A. Mactor. So he just did it to help us, educate us, mm. you know, guys. Like yeah, driving down the, the 405, changing clothes, comp cards and headshots splayed all over my back seat. <laughs> yeah. I mean, the show was okay, but when I punched Jax, that sent it into the stratosphere. Okay. Relaxer. <laughs> It wasn't when he was ever the guy who sent that show into the stratosphere. No, Stassi that was and Jax. Stassi and Jax. Yes. <laughs> Sorry. Listen, listen. As long as, like, it doesn't make them any better. But they were the ones who did it. They were the they were the monsters. You were not the monster who did it. Yeah. And then Riley, uh, Riley remembered watching that episode with her middle school friends. We were like, "This show is epic," she said. Dude. It was, Sandoval said. Riley says, it was so cool. I, that was such a fucking disturbing, her middle school friends. So his publicist, his publicist was in middle school when this show started. And now that, now she's his publicist. I don't, I don't know even how I feel about that. Yeah. I mean, it's so long. There was a part where he's, you know, going on about like, you know, I used to want to be a real actor and look down on reality TV, but now I look down on actors. I'm like, bro, can you do this? Oh, dear. <laughs> Meryl Streep's at home, like, just like kind of giving herself scrapes on her arm with her nails, just like totally insecure about herself. Like, what have I wasted my life doing? What Why have I worked on all of these accents? What exactly does this mean when he says, can you do this? Does that like make a tone deaf statements about George Floyd? Is it about uh, appearing on camera in a, you know, a motorcycle with a sidecar? Like what exactly is the, this part that he's well, challenging was the actors not, to do? You know, it was just written, but you know that he pointed at his face. Like, can you do this? <laughs> Have the can weight of the this? world on you? <laughs> Gesturing yeah. towards the pompadour, you know? Yeah. Wow. Well, wow. What a, what a, what a, a flooza. Well, Tom Sandoval never fails to disappoint, I suppose, except that's exactly what his brand is. But uh, <laughs> disappointment. Disappointment and Tom failure. Sandoval. And this, Mactor. Uh, wow. He just uh, wanted to give us an insight into the world of a Mactor. That is, a, that is something that a Mactor would say, by the way. That is a yeah, I want to give insight the into the world of a Mactor. A guy, hot guy. Not hot enough to be a model, not good enough to be an actor. So you're both driving along. You got headshots in your car. Wow. <laughs> it's pretty incisive so far. Yeah. Life of a Mactor driving a Nissan. Wow. So, uh, well, that sounds like uh, so I've got a lot of fun reading ahead of me. And then I think the thing for Interview Magazine, that just popped up this morning. And it looks like it's a profile of him holding desserts. I don't even understand that. But... Um, yeah, he. Uh, I don't want to hear him complaining because now he's on the cover of the New York Times magazine and he's an interview magazine and um, he's living his best life in those photo shoots, as you said. And, uh, you know, I don't know if I want to hear any complaining. Like, Dude, the world's against me, dude. I mean, because the world is against him, but he has his fans and he is definitely getting his exposure and he's getting what he wants out of his career that he's, that he's always wanted, which is like massive media attention. Yeah. So congratulations. Right. All right. So here we go. Um, this is episode four of season 11. And this is another um, gloss over and kind of ode to Tom Sandoval this episode. This is a poor, poor Tom. Oh, poor Tom. No one will forgive Tom and he's having dark thoughts. Mm. <sighs> Yes, and it opens up with people, you know, getting ready for the day for all the nothing they're going to be doing. Katie's doing her hair. Lala's looking through a bin. Schwartz is doing push-ups. Sandoval's brushing his teeth. Ariana's brushing her teeth. Um, it's you know exciting times happening in the world in the, in the world of this cast. Yeah, and Brock's making a bottle for summer ocean moon face winter in the winter. And uh, she's crying, and he's like, oh, those are crocodile tears. <laughs> and then we see the telltale sign that we're going to James and Allie's house. Uh, Southwest the opening of Lost. <laughs> I was going to say, a Southwest airplane uh, <laughs> flying overhead. I mean, they really, it's like clockwork. They just have it. They it just every single time it goes over, and Jim's like, ah, Paul 
party, poo party. I'm so excited about it, but it's like a lot of work hosting for all these people. Doing a poo party is hard. It's our first time hosting for a pool party. I'm getting prepared to be a host. Welcome, welcome, welcome to Costa Kennedy. Not only did I buy the food and drinks, I bought the barbecue as well. <laughs> yeah. He's like, oh, yeah, I worked really hard today. I went to Home Depot. I went to Vaughn's. I went to freaking Target. I'm like, that sounds like an excellent day. Like, I would be jealous of that. And so he's like, he's like okay, Ale, Ale, you're the decorator outside. Okay, okay. She's like, yeah, I'm doing it. Ha! I'm doing it. And then he sprays her with water. Stop, James. James, stop. James. Domestic That's Allie. Bliss. James, no. James, I'm pee in the bush. It. James, no. <laughs> uh, so then we go to Ariana and Katie, and uh, they're, like, going over what they should wear. Like, is this a one-piece day? Is, like, a two-piece too much? It's, like, basically <laughs> me and Ben before any show. And yeah. uh, then she's like, can you believe our Lyft driver last night? I can't believe that. And we find out that their Lyft driver for See You Next Tuesday was like, whoa, I remember this house. You and your husband were fighting. I think he cheated on you. He was the Lyft driver from the night, March 1st. Wow. That is, that is why. It's, it's always strange if you get like a, a rideshare driver twice. Like it's happened to me, like I think just once, maybe twice in my life. It's always strange. Um, and even when I was driving Uber, it was strange to get the same passenger. And that would happen. And I'm like, I remember this place. But what I'm surprised at is that anyone, any driver could just remember one generic modern farmhouse from another. Like, they all look the same. I don't know. I would never be able to say, oh, I remember this house. And, like, it looks like literally every other house on this show. Well, they're so big. You know how they put those giant houses on the tiny lots? I think, yeah. I think that's why you remember, because they put this huge house on this little tiny lot, and you're like, oh, my God, how is that house even fitting on this lot? And is this legal? And is this permitted? <laughs> you know, all these questions run through your head when you see those those big McMansions on the little lot. So, yeah, I think you remember that, especially if you've your- got Tom in your back seat going, one day I'm going to be in the New York Times, and you're going to regret this. And her going, oh, for, shut up, you fucking loser. It's time for a commercial. It's time for a Crappens commercial. From Wondery, this is Black History for Real. I'm Francesca Ramsey. And I'm Conscious Lee. What do most (laughs) people think about when they hear the words Black History? Rosa Parks, Reconstruction, MLK, February, Black History Exactly, exactly. There are so many stories of Black History that we just are not really talking about or thinking about, especially outside of February. And we are about to flip the script on all of that. Because on this show, you're going to hear a little less... In August 1492, Columbus sailed the ocean blue. And a little bit more. She is a heroine to some. As a fighter for black rights, she is a villain to others. Follow Black History for Real on the Wondery app or wherever you get your podcasts. Listen everywhere on February 5th, or you can listen early and ad-free on Wondery Plus starting January 29th. Join Wondery Plus on the Wondery app or on Apple Podcasts. Academy is a new scripted podcast that follows Ava Richards, played by HBO's Industries' Myhala Herald, a brilliant scholarship student who has to quickly adapt to her newfound eat-or-be-eaten world. Ava's ambitions take hold and her small-town values break in hopes of becoming the first scholarship student to make the list. Bishop Gray's all-coveted academic top 10, curated by the headmaster himself. But after realizing she has no chance at the list on her own, she reluctantly accepts an invitation to a secret underground society that pulls the strings on campus life and academic success. If she bends to their will, she'll have everything she's ever dreamed of. But at what cost? Academy takes you into the world of a cutthroat private school where power, money, and sex collide in a game of life and death. Follow Academy on the Wondery app or wherever you get your podcasts. You can binge all episodes of Academy early and ad-free right now by joining Wondery Plus. The driver was like, oh yeah, I remember this house. It's the only house I've ever dropped someone off at where there was a strange purple glow coming through all the windows. (laughs) Right, exactly. (laughs) The house that Hubert built. Um, So she's like, well, I was like, we're not together anymore. And he was like, yeah, makes sense. (laughs) Because that was like, that was huge. And like, he has no idea. Like, it was like a huge thing that happened. 
Yeah, Ariana's laughing. It's that he has like no idea how many people probably want to talk to him. So um, Ariana thought that uh, they're talking about last night when they went to Sir, and Ariana thought Lala had some really great points, but then Schwartz was acting all like, "Oh my God, you guys are getting it up on me!" And she's like, "Um, three people who have something to say. That means they're being ganged up on." <sighs> And so then she's like doing her interview and she has like a, her, like she's like doing her makeup. She has like her mirror out. She's doing the thing on her face. They're definitely get, trying to give her the, I'm too big for this show vibe. I think they're, I think they're going to try to sort of villainize her a little bit because they could have very easily asked her to say this line again, but instead they put in the one where she's putting makeup on and she's like, the guy who I haven't spoken to in however many months all of a sudden is some sort of authority on who I am and how I live my life and how I think and feel. That's interesting. Just like a man. So Katie's like, like, what? Like, I'm supposed to get a Tahoe? <sighs> like, I'm supposed to abandon all the work I'm doing right now? Like, to go on a Schwartz trip? And she tells us, yeah, I'd rather eat a jean jacket. <laughs> That's such a specific choice. <laughs> like, of all the things to eat, a jean jacket. This glass um, not available. I mean, <laughs> I like Katie talking about how she's so busy um, opening up this sandwich shop that she can't go to Tahoe as she prepares to go to a pool party <laughs> in Burbank <laughs> under a flight path <laughs> with poop falling out of a Southwest Airline lab onto, <laughs> onto the lawn. So um, they're like, yeah, we're not going to that. Fuck that trip. Uh, so then we go to Villa Rosa, and uh, Sheena and Lala are there, and they're joking like, oh, my God. Every time I pull up to that this house, I'm like, this is just like mine's. It's like mine's. <laughs> Should we place like a bet that Lisa will make a comment uh, that I'm not wearing any clothes? <laughs> yeah. Darling, you're not wearing any clothes. Like, oh, my God. We just totally made a bet. <laughs> darling you haven't met this guy before and she holds up a new dog it looks like really all the other dogs just this is donut i named her after ken's favorite pillow why have you guys got no clothes on um so this dog the cloning is starting to break so you know how the cloning the first clone is almost perfect and then the next clone is like not perfect and then the next clone is kind of melty faced and then the next clone is just like two-headed what is i know wrong you want to make clone i know you want to make a multiplicity reference right now so uh, the floor is yours <laughs> <laughs> no i was leaving that open i was leaving that open for you i've actually but never this seen dog it. is you've never seen multiplicity no that's why Every time you mention it, that's why I never, I never pile on because I haven't seen it. But I know you like to mention it. Wow. Um, no, I, I mean it's I'll that, that and you finally saw Steel Magnolias, right? I finally saw the color purple. Steel Magnolias, I still have not seen. Okay. Not so multiplicity dude. is when they just basically make a thousand Dolly Partons, and each Dolly Parton has a different outfit. <laughs> and one of them has an allergic reaction to something. Kidding. That's like my favorite. That, that would be my version of multiplicity. Just make nine million Dolly Partons. Um, no, I wasn't actually going to make a multiplicity uh, statement. Um, I was just going to say this dog looks like it is at the tail end of the cloning cycle. Let's just say okay. that this is this dog's not winning any DNA. You know what I mean? It's got the tail end. This poor thing. It looks like an Ewok that's been like smushed down with an iron and like. Run over by a tractor. <laughs> Stop cloning your dogs. Uh, <laughs> the poor donut. <laughs> well, um, yeah, sweet, sweet donut. Uh, yeah, I didn't study donut enough, but my impression of donut is that yeah, maybe donut is on the on the raw end of the cloning stick there. But um, is that a, is a raw end of a cloning stick? I don't even know if that. <laughs> Fuck me with. I think I just jacket. like okay. <laughs> I think I just mixed metaphors and added a new twist to it. <laughs> He's on the raw end of the cloning stick. Um, I kind of feel like this moment's like George Floyd. This is a, I just made up a new statement. So uh, Lisa Vanderpump is like, oh, hello, hello. So I really want to talk to you about so many things. And I don't think you're going to like everything I have to say. And they're like, okay, what's it about? And just, well, oh, can gets, you believe it? Raquel was found in the hot tub with Tom Schwartz uh, and Sandoval when Ariana was out of town in the hot tub. 
in the nighttime. Ken, that was last season, darling. <laughs> all right. Go back inside, all right? Do you remember what I've told you to bring out here this time? All right, well, <laughs> we have to give him the <laughs> we have to give him the 2024 system update. <laughs> He's still stuck on Big Sur. <laughs> <laughs> Apparently, at night time, he has a whole different look. <laughs> so, um, uh, so she's like, "Come on, come with me. I have to." finish making this vase of flowers. So they go outside and she's just making a vase and they just stare at her making a vase. It's definitely like a rich person thing to do just to remind the poor people how rich you are that like you are like <laughs> making a vase. And well, so you used to have the excuse of the restaurants, right? Like, oh, mm -hmm. I'm doing this for the restaurants. This is what I do. I work so hard every day. I wake up and I put pink flowers in a vase. And then she would take it to the restaurant and be like, look at me. I put flowers into a vase. <laughs> You're right. And they would all bow, yes. you know. And uh, now she's just like, fuck it. Everywhere's closing. So I'm just doing vases <laughs> just for me. <laughs> Random things to put in front of Max's face when he's trying to tell me how his day is. You know how it goes, darling. <laughs> I just tell my sweet son, Max, here, can you take these flowers and put them over there? The man needs to bus. He needs to bus to be alive. <laughs> he needs something to water. He's just not whole, that one. I need him to come over and ask if he can clear this plate. It just makes yeah. him feel happy. So she's like, I spent time with Sandoval. And I know for a fact he's in a very, very dark place. And she's like, well, I'm pissed because I reached out to him and when his friend died and he blocked me. And he's reaching into this villain energy and I'm really not here for it. He needs to humble himself. He needs to have humility. And I told him he better find a good therapist. <laughs> yeah, he needs a good therapist. Or... Instead of a therapist, he could go to a place called Intimacy and get into a cold bath. So Sheena's like, yeah, my conversation with Sandoval, like, could not have been, like, more frustrating. Like, he's taking, like, no accountability for, like, anything he's done. And so, like, Lisa says he's depressed. I haven't seen that. I've just seen him project. So Lisa says, maybe he's angry and upset. He doesn't know what he's doing. He's a broken bird, my favorite kind of bird. Mm. And Lala's saying, no, he's stepping down. What did he say to me last night? What did he say? What did he say about me, Sheena? And she was like, she, he called you a narcissist. She, yeah, a narcissist. <laughs> and then we see the clip of Sheena saying, a narcissist wouldn't call themselves a narcissist. And he goes, yeah, I know. That's why Lala won't call herself that. Bang! Bang! So to show that Lala is not a narcissist, she absolutely does not make this about her. She goes, I've messed up a lot of times, and I feel like I own it all the time. Yes, I should have asked some more questions about Randall's. I'm not stupid. I understand it. And you know what? I was in a relationship that was tough. I had to watch a man bounce fried chicken thighs on his stomach for kink. Yes, it was hard. And I didn't. I didn't ask questions. And I knew I should. Okay, la la, you're talking about Randall again. We're supposed to be talking about Scandal. <laughs> Uh, and I love that Lala's still trying to make that story. I mean, this cast, I swear. So Vanderpump's like, oh, and we never held that against you. What are you talking about? You all held it against her for like years and years. Of course you did. This is Vanderpump rules. <laughs> and she goes, but he has. He has. He's going to the press. And he's saying that Lala needs to share her life and that she's not real. And I just can't forgive someone when they can't acknowledge they hurt me. <laughs> But you have the support and love right now. Life is going swimmingly for you. Look at what you've achieved. Look at all the... I mean, you moved to Westwood. What's an accomplishment? But he's doing nothing. He has no support, darling. Look Except at poor, poor Sandoval. He looks like a pottery version of his former self. <laughs> just dried out and clay looking he's aged 30 years i mean that was before the affair as well but I don't, no one's really sure but i don't know if he's allergic to moisturize or what it is i didn't really ask really i don't care but you should darling his own the, the people who work in his kitchens call him clay duval it's just sad it's sad <sighs> that he really has turned into clay duval 
<laughs> yeah, clay dude. He fell. does look like he does look like a pottery Sandoval. Look at that. <laughs> so um, she's like, Dolly. Okay, Lisa. You know what? If you're just so worried about Tom, why don't you take him off television first of all? Because it's obviously not good for him. And take him into your home and really work on him, Lisa, like one of your projects instead of forcing his ass on the rest of us. Okay, and giving him, you know. A presence and for what he did, you know, and congratulating him and just moving him up in the world uh, for what he did. Like, I'm not, I'm not buying it from Lisa. And also, I'm like, I'm really, truly, and this is me not being bitchy, but I said it just after something bitchy. I feel for Lisa with her brother. Obviously, that's terrible, but that's not fair to use that to guilt other people into things regarding other people that have nothing to do with them. That's not right. I don't know. I mean, I think that like what she went through with her brother was really terrible, obviously. And so yeah. I think that she's probably particularly sensitive to it. So like, I don't, I actually don't find fault with her um, having that instinct. Um, I just don't know with Sandoval. I think you're like, some people were saying that online too, that if Sandoval, like, like Sandoval, the healthiest thing for him, if he is really in a, in a challenging space with his mental health is to not be on reality TV. So uh, Lisa is basically saying how that he's like a shadow of his former self and he just doesn't want, she doesn't want to see anyone go down a path of that kind of depression when the world is against you. And she says she's seen depression. She knows depression. She remembers what her brother said. It's always going to stay with her. And there's just like only so much that someone can take before they break. And she just doesn't want to be in a position where they all have regret. And, you know, she's, she says that she never thought suicide would touch her life. And when her, like, it's just, this is all like a massive trigger for her. And um, she really feels that Sandoval is not the sort of person to say he has suicidal thoughts unless he means it. Well, I think that it sucks because it's like, you know, everybody loves Lisa and especially these girls. And you're not going to be like, oh, well, I'm going to completely disregard what you just said about your brother because you know, obviously that's a very real thing and no one's going to be that mean, but it puts them in a place where they're immediately like, oh my God, Lisa went through this. So it's almost like Lisa went through this. So now let's just let Tom back in. And I just, <sighs> I think what is very difficult here, I'm just going to be honest. I don't want to say like, it's not trouble. fair. Like, cause you know, it's, <laughs> I'm going to say something that may get me into trouble, but I'm going to, it's, it's coming from an honest place of how I feel, which is that what's, what's difficult about this situation here is that I don't think anyone wants to see anyone who is struggling with their mental health, who is in depression, who may hurt themselves. No one wants to see anyone go down that path. And I don't even want to see Tom Sandoval go down that path. I don't want to see Rachel go down that path. I don't want to see anyone go down that path. And what's hard here is that when, you know, Lisa says, when Sandoval says he feels this way, he's not going to say that unless he means it. The problem for me is that his credibility is so in the gutter and I have to grapple with the uh, with this idea that I want to believe someone. If someone says that they're having suicidal ideations, if someone says they're depressed, my instinct is to say, no matter what, you have to believe that and you have to lead with that. But what's hard is that his credibility is such shit that honestly, I can't help but feel like is he really, or is this just like another part of like the the story he's weaving to gain sympathy? And I hate, I absolutely hate having to doubt, have that doubt. And I I tried to skirt around it because I'm like I don't want people to be like, how could you doubt, doubt that? But like honestly, it is what I think when I watch this show. I hope to God that that is that I'm a hundred percent wrong. Uh, because it because that would be real bullshit if if there were some sort of manipulation around that. But that is truly how I feel when I watch this. And I, and I well, grapple I think with most that. people do, right? I mean, it's Tom. Yeah. So I think most people do feel that. But I think it's just one of those things where if somebody says it, you just take it at face value no matter what. Because yeah, and that's what it's I'm doing. one of those things where it's like, it's not really as important to be right, I guess, in this instance. as it's Yeah, a, that's a really good point. <clears throat> but at the same time, you know, it also doesn't just, it's also not just a get out of jail free card where everybody needs to be like, okay, whatever you need then, you know? It's, I think in one way, it's like, well, let's, not us personally, but like the cast, okay, well, you don't need to be doing podcasts about him every single day. And you don't need to be giving interviews about it every single day. And you don't need to make it all about completely villainizing it every single day. But I don't think it also needs to be like, okay, but then we need to shove him in Ariana's face every episode 
either. So, I mean, mm-hmm. I don't really know what the answer is, but it's a quagmire. It's a real, it's a real, uh, it's a it's classic a Vanderpump Rules quagmire. quagmire. Yeah. yeah. But you know what? I was like, you know what? I was going to skirt around this. I was like, you know what? I have, I'm like, we're on a podcast. I have to express how I feel when I watch this show. And that's how I feel. And I don't like it. Um, and, uh, like, but it is like, so that's why when Lisa says, oh, he's someone who, when he says this, he wouldn't lie about it. That's, I think that was what made me be like, I have to say something about this because the truth is that he has deeply lied about things like really, really fundamentally lied in hurtful ways. And so it's, it's just, I I don't know. It's hard for me to take anything that he says. I have to take everything with some skepticism, no matter what now. So it's difficult. Yeah. So, um, it's very important thing is difficult to get through <laughs> for us. That's what we're, we're like this narcissist. And we're like, guys, this is how difficult this is for us. God damn, Sandoval. <laughs> what he's done to us. <laughs> um, but yeah, it is a difficult place, but that's kind of why we're in that place. You know what I mean? Because you get put in that difficult place and it's like, oh, but then, you know, you're emotionally torn. So then you have to put that person back. You have to let that person back in. Dun, dun, dun. I know, because we're good people. Yeah, we're just, we're really good people, guys. <laughs> guys, <laughs> Sandoval is now the third co-host of the show. We, we yeah, did. guys, no, we felt so bad about Sa- Tom Sandoval. He's joining us now. Yeah. Um, Lala, <laughs> so is. so then Lala goes, you know, I hear what you're saying, and I most certainly don't want anyone to wear this for the rest of their life, because I know what it's like to continue <sighs> seeing people. Oh, like, <laughs> for fuck's sake. <laughs> The the way she is trying because Lala has never been able to have the A story on this show. She's always B or C, even and she has every time she has a scandal, someone has just a bigger version of it. So she's like, "Okay, so the coast is clear. I can have I can have a scandal now. Can I? No, yeah." Okay. And she's like, "Yeah, it's just like me, because I don't want them to have to carry it like I had to. I never really gave Sandoval's health much thought. In my mind, I looked at him as someone like." My ex. They don't have, like, feelings. <laughs> and I don't want to be angry all the time. It's truly killing me. It's killing me. <laughs> and this hasn't been, like, easy for me, especially I was so distracted the other day that I burned my famous enchiladas. He was genuinely, like, one of the best friends I ever had in my life. <laughs> So there, she's like, but doesn't that make it easier if you just forgive? And um, I don't know. Have you called Kyle Richards lately? <gasps> She's not going through a great time. Ronnie, so. that was so good. <laughs> oh. I mean, just saying. Wow. Good so. night, everyone. Good night. We are watching Rapids. The show is over. <laughs> There's no need to top it. Nothing else needs to be said. That was good. <laughs> So Sheena's like, but is it worth losing Ariana? She's like, talk to us, Sheena. Don't just be a people pleaser unless you're pleasing me and Sandoval. <laughs> Go where your gut tells you. Um, I don't think we need to tell anyone on this cast to go where their gut tells them because it has never led to a good place, ever. <laughs> yeah. Uh, instincts don't work on this show, okay? Commercials. Here comes one right now. So instincts led to a 10-year relationship with Tom Sandoval. So, uh, <laughs> Sheena's like, uh, Ariana made it very clear that anyone who chooses to be friends with Sandoval is basically dead to her. Yeah, but like at the same time, if someone's like really struggling at this level, like, how do I like keep coming? For, like, how do I keep coming for him? So then um, I think this is where I was thinking, like, okay, well, you can you can not completely forgive the person, but then also not do a podcast about them every day to get money for yourself. You know what I mean? <laughs> <laughs> the, yeah, there, there is a middle ground. Guys. Also, by the way, let's not forget that Lisa Vanderpump, she has a show that she has to oversee here, and she knows this cast has to get along and has to shoot together. So she's like, "Come on, come on, stiff up a lip and all that." But so, I think also behind the scenes, I think this cast also realizes that, and they've also been shooting now for a while and see what the season is, which is literally nothing. Like, nothing is happening. It's like a bunch of kumbaya moments. This is episode four, which means it's probably week four-ish. So they're probably like, okay, nothing's happening. And these two are making all these millions off this show, and nobody else is. So why are we trying to work? They should be fighting on this show. (laughs) Like, yeah, let's let's bring his ass back around. What the hell am I trying to pretend I care about Katie's jean jacket jokes? (laughs) That's probably very true. 
Although hot take, I'm I'm really enjoying the season. I don't know if other people are enjoying it, but I actually am enjoying it because I feel like everything they're talking about is like real shit in their lives as opposed to like, dude, let's have like a party where we dress up like we're in gym or something, you know? Like so it's not a, it's not full of fireworks, but I uh, I'm into it. I'm, oddly enough, I am into it. So um, anyway, who cares? So Sheena's like, um, okay, well, we're going to go to Tahoe. Yeah, because we want to be on the show. So we're going to do that. And Sheena says, she's like, well, yeah, you know, there's like a lake house and like a boat. So like, I'm totally in. Like, especially if we can like put Tom in the pool in the water and see if he can drown like Jack's almost did. So they don't know if Sandoval's going to go, but. Of course says, he's going to go. Right. Yeah, said, but of course. Th- just let him come if he wants. Just stop attacking him. No one's perfect, right? <laughs> nope. Just look at Rocio. <laughs> random, random stray over there. Did As you know I- Rocio has one ear that's bigger than the other? <laughs> <laughs> Here, throw a flower at her. <laughs> Did you know her foot is composed mainly of cucumbers? How odd. Sometimes Ken and I like to play this game where we push Rocio down the right side of the stairs and see if she ever touches the left side of the stairs. Anybody want to play? <laughs> we call it Rocio bowling. Um, but we, Rocio. not to be confused. Not not to be confused with bowling at Rocio, which is where we have a stand at the end of a bowling alley and roll balls at her just to avoid them. Ken's ball is very slow, but it gets there. Hmm, okay, so now we go to James's, and we know why, because... (laughs) (laughs) So, uh, yeah, the poop party! So, um, it's a big pool party, Katie and Ariana arrive, and then Sheena and Lala arrive. There's basically, like, six people, and James is acting like he is, um, you know, performing at for Cascade again. So he's, yeah, papa, papa, here we go, everyone. And Schwartz comes with some plants and Allie's like, wow, he brought another plant. I think this is the third plant that Schwartz has given us. I think I'll need a gardener. <laughs> <laughs> That's so Taurus of me. <laughs> uh, what is she? I forget what she is. Does she tell us? She's like, that's so like Libra. Um, so so Jericho, Libra. James's friend, is there. And Schwartz is like, oh, yeah, I'm like sober curious, but I think I'm going to have some of this tequila because it's really good tequila. I'm really curious about the tequila. And, uh, oh, no, the girls are here. And last night, the conversation with the group didn't go so well. They tarred and feathered me, man. But I'm Tom Schwartz. I'm not the accessory to the affair. I'm just the guy whose house they used to find. In and the guy that lies for Tom every day and whatever. <laughs> I'm just the guy who helped this affair continue on quietly behind closed doors without anyone knowing. It was almost like um, if their affair was the laptop, I was the dongle. I was like the accessory. Oh no, I was the accessory. I'm just the Kato Kaland of this affair, guys. <laughs> Dude, I told you it was like the OJ trial. Jesus, just coming here was like everybody chasing me down the freeway in my white Bronco. <laughs> Dude, next time with your white Bronco, like you totally add like a purple highlighter underneath the undercarriage. It looks awesome. It's sick. Mm. So James has made a something about her stool floaty, which is actually more progress than the actual restaurant has made. So I have to give them credit. Man, Lay's built them a, a set box, which we haven't shown yet, right? Did you show yours? The potato chip box? That, I feel like I did sent? back. I showed it on the gram back. Uh, it was during BravoCon. I'll get it next time. It came but, during um, BravoCon. So while all of you guys were actually doing something productive with your time, I was taking photos of a Lay's potato box. <laughs> um anyway they did that and then he's made this floaty version of it so then now james is doing exactly what you think you know mature homeowner would be doing jumping off the roof into his pool yeah score the usual usual thing yeah. um i feel like that is you know i've talked a lot of shit about the valley but i think that one of the perks of the valley is that it seems like every house in the valley has the ability to say i'm a golden god and jump into a pool like i think all houses in the in the valley are zoned so that way there's at least one roof very close to a pool that you can jump into so mm-hmm. that's cool <sighs> okay so it. now we go to the classiest place we've seen in a long time on this show into me see. <laughs> <laughs> 
okay, this is a real stretch. To me, see, there's a, there are a lot of really bad pun <laughs> stores in Los Angeles, and a lot of bad, silly named. Um, here's where the silly names are in Los Angeles. Anyone who opens up like a pho restaurant, they love a pun, like pho me, or one pho. That was my favorite. Pho. <laughs> All those, but then new age stuff also into me see. This has a real this is a real stretch here because it's spelled into me C C S E A and they pronounce it intimacy. So um intimacy that and also it sounds gross because I don't want to go sit in a tub of someone's cum. You know what I mean? Like what is this below deck? That's what it sounds like, right? People fuck in these tubs. You want to come in? It is literally like I think it's it's trying to seem deep, but it's really just saying, welcome to a sea of self-involvement. It literally says, into me, see. Like, I'm into me, I'm into Which me. is a perfect place for a Tom Sandoval scene. So let's go with Billy Lee. The, the added bonus of Billy Lee. Wow, how'd she ever get fired? Crazy. <laughs> <laughs> so they walk into, into me, see, into me, see. And the lady's like, welcome. This is our quantum wellness studio. Have you guys ever done cold plunges before? And Sandoval tells us, <laughs> this whole situation with like, the scandal and the aftermath have like been really stressed out, like depressed and overwhelmed. And like, I realized that I have to be able to handle those emotions in different ways, healthier ways. I'm like, go to therapy. Not, not an ice bucket challenge. <laughs> yeah. This is going to fix everything. <laughs> so he gets in this bath of cold water and Billy's just like kneeling down, watching him with her, <laughs> her eyes really wide. Billy looks like someone's always throwing keys at her. You know what I mean? <laughs> like she, she, I think you said that. She That's has so that true. Look of, she has that look of fear in her eyes that I get when someone throws keys at me. Mm -hmm. Like, <gasps> but she's just always like she just stays like that. It's like someone slapped her on the back when keys were being thrown at her, and she's like, "How are you feeling, Tom? How are you feeling? Is it cold?" And he's like, "Ugh." It's cold, bro. <gasps> it's hard, bro. <gasps> it's hard. She's like, what is the pain level between one and ten? He's like, oh, dude, it's like a nine, bro. <laughs> oh, oh, man. It feels like especially weird right now because I've never been an outsider with my group of friends. And I just feel like Andy Dufresne when he first gets to Shawshank, man. Like, I wish I could just get back some part of my life. My old life. It's just like always the people that are close to you that seem to hurt you the most. I was like, yeah, isn't that funny how the people that are close to you hurt you the most? Uh, you should ask Ariana about that, actually. Just ask your mom about that. You should ask literally the person at Starbucks. You should ask her non-retired yet mother about that, who no longer has her fund to uh, retire, Tom. So um, then he like goes forward and ducks his head in the water and like slowly brings it out and the water brings his forward duck tail down and he just like poses and flexes for the camera it's like wow and billy lee is watching theme song. <laughs> what a meaningful scene tom oh my god billy lee has this smile on her face like oh my god i can't believe he did it oh my god she's like watching frankenstein come to life or something like she's just like it's like so many people enamored. are gonna come see me in my open market laugh factory now <laughs> can't wait to tell off Sweet Lady Jane's bakery when it closes. So uh, now back to the pool party. And again, we know this because while Tom is like in the pool, we hear the. So another plane goes over by. And then, you know, the pool party, Lala's talking about how her bathing suit makes me want to get a BBL. You know, my I want to get a BBL, especially after everything I've gone through with Rand, because I know what it's like to carry the shame of someone who's called a mission. Okay, Lala. Okay, Lala. <laughs> um, this is so a conversation between a new L.A. young, fresh person and an older, haggard L.A. person. Okay? <laughs> um, I want to get a BBL. Old, haggard person. Young person. Sam, let's just hold each other accountable and do 50 squats a day. That's like so, I just got to LA, isn't it? Right. You know what we should do? We should be accountability buddies. Fuck off. How about that? I don't want a fucking accountability. Get some get some fat from my face and put it into my ass. Okay. <laughs> yeah, I'm about it. to say, the new, the new person to LA actually has dreams that if you work hard for something, you'll achieve it. Um, the, 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 
person who's been through the works knows you just got to do what you can do. You got to just cheat your way to the top. I mean, that's how, I mean, look, Tom Sandoval's literally on the cover of New York Times magazine. He literally cheated his way to the top. Okay. Mm. You just got to cut corners where you can. So Ali says that James hasn't had a drink in three months. And Lala's like, yeah, the first 30 days is like freaking hard. It's sort of like the first 30 days when I was separated from Rand because that was like a really big thing when I was separated from Rand, you know? And then we cut to James outside going, look, it's like beers, but they're weed, bro. And then he like pops them open and starts like chugging. (laughs) Doing great. That's for that sobriety is killing. So do you guys ever have conversations about why he got sober? Because I've had a lot of sobering conversations about the trauma I went through when I was date, when I was married to Rand. You know, it was such a tough time for me in my life, and I feel like it's something that I really understand well and can talk about at length. <laughs> She's like, well, did he ever tell you why he got sober? Because I want to know, like, why? Why did he get sober? So what was his rock bottom moment? I can't wait to use it against him later. <laughs> and she's like, um, I'm not going to, like, share that personally, but, like, you could ask him about it, and then maybe he could tell you about it. She's like, wait, everybody has a rock bottom moments, Alice. Tell me, what, what's this rock bottom moment? I'm not going <sighs> to tell you. Tell me, Alice! Tell me oh. I'm going to use your face and put it in my ass. It's a BBL. <laughs> Don't tell anyone, but his rock bottom moment literally happened at the restaurant rock bottom. He threw some spinach artichoke dip against the wall. And I was like, you're at the rock bottom. He's like, I know, Ella. That's what we're eating at. It was terrible. <laughs> and Lala's like, well, here's my rock bottoms. And she talks about when she went to Disney World with Rand's family and Rand's kids and was wasted the whole time and was like, that was rock bottoms for me. I mean, nothing's worse than telling Cinderella off for having a pancake ass. <laughs> but I did it. <laughs> I came back and I changed my fucking life. I mean, do you know how difficult it was for me when Rance got into the Dumbo ride and had to be pried out by a fire engine team and I was drunk the entire time? That was my rock bottoms. Mm-hmm. So she's like, yeah, but like with ups and downs, I don't want to trigger James because sobriety is something I'm very passionate about. So meanwhile, James is like chugging the drinks outside and starting all the hamburgers on fire. And uh, Ariana's just like, fire, James, it's and a starts, fire. <laughs> and he starts like, he starts like flapping something at it. And Ariana's like, don't fan the flames, James, don't fan the flames, which just felt poetic for this show. I mean, this is the show that's all about fanning flames. I know. So, it's like uh, the, that's, that's the name of the spinoff. Don't fan the flames. Um, <laughs> then he does fan the flames and then he starts DJing. And at first I was like, this is so shitty to have people come to your party where they're forced to listen to your shitty DJ sets. But then I remembered myself because, you know, a party at my house is like, John Cusain, darling, John Cusain. <laughs> Ronnie Oki. It's like, there's karaoke here? Nope, it's just for me. You can have a seat right over there. Enjoy the Fritos. <laughs> so now Lala is talking with Schwartz in the corner. And she goes, hey, I know I came pretty heavy last night. Sort of like all the heavy experiences I had after I got divorced from Rand after he cheated on me. Would you like to ask any questions about it? It was a tough time. We can make it the story of the season if you want. It's oh, not as no. heavy as I came with Ladon, though. That was some squirtings. <laughs> that was some squirtings. So I'm still working on, like, don't get triggered by your experiences, but that's going to be a process. And he goes, yeah, oh, that's oh, that's beautiful. I love this. I'm so tired of keeping my dukes up. I can't go from, like, machetes to crying in the fetal position. There has to be a middle ground for me. He's like, yeah, oh, and I appreciate you acknowledging that. You know, we all have problems, but there was a moment last night, and Ariana looked at me like I was subhuman, like I was just some muck that came out of the river which to be fair i do spend a lot of time just rolling around in rivers so i kind of get that like she's been exalted to this queen status or something okay 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 first of all does lala is such a guy on this show isn't she you can tell that she's like paid more attention to the guys like how the guys behave on this show because she acts just like one of the guys she acts like an asshole and then she comes back and she's like i'm totally different now i'm a different lala than yeah. the lala she knew before uh so she's doing her lala 6.0 or whatever she's on now 
and Tom understands it. So he's like, she's one of us now. I'm just going to, she's guy coding her language. So, okay. Are we on as a bitch, right? <laughs> yeah. Immediately, you know? It's also like such the thing that like a guy, especially on this show, would be pissed at Ariana being put on to an alleged pedestal because that's the pedestal that he wants to be on. He wants, he literally wants to be on a pedestal. That's why he's always like, oh, I'm so cute. Put me on a cute pedestal. And it's like, yeah, Ariana has been put on a pedestal, but the pedestal, it's not so much that Ariana was put on a pedestal it's like she was standing on just normal ground and the ground beneath all the rest of you guys just sunk you know <laughs> so she just sort of became a pedestal but i think it's like yeah she was put on a pedestal because when scandal happened we all sort of had a moment where we said you know what a this is this is wild but b ariana has been the only cast member over 10 years who's been more or less Pretty chill, pretty reasonable, pretty nice. Like, no one is without fault, for sure. But it's one of those moments where you think, gosh, this is, everyone on this show has been so terrible at one time or another. And Ariana's been, like, the only, like, semi-decent one. And then she's the one who just gets cheated on in this way. And so everyone wants to give her some flowers. And now they are all so resentful of it. It is hilarious. She's like, yeah, she was put on a pedestal, is what she's trying to say. And he's like, yeah, there's like a diva energy, you know? But I'm not going to fawn over her, and you know, just for her affection or validation from her. I mean, that was very triggering last night. That was really triggering. <laughs> really? Um, maybe it was triggering that you not only brought her ex, who totally fucked her over, but then tried to get all of her friends to hang out with him. And her at the same time. Like, why is that not okay for her to be triggered about that? Jeez. <laughs> so she's like, yeah, well, that's natural. But I thought you handled it so well. But, you know, like, I was triggered. Okay, can we all just stop being triggered, first of all? Please. I can't. Yeah, but I was triggered, though, because I immediately took it that you that you talked about my ego. So there are times when I take things at heart, okay? For instance, you know, like when Rand cheated on me and then left me and almost had, I kind of had a lullaby moment there instead of scandal moment, you know? And like, that was kind of a big thing. So maybe we should talk about that a little bit more this season, you know? Scandalala. <laughs> yeah, scandal. Sc Randaball. No, Scandal. Scand Randaball Rand. works, yeah. <laughs> Randaball. Yeah, Randaball is just Rand and, and Tom Sandoval mixed together. <laughs> Scandalala. <laughs> Scanda, Scanda, Scanda. And the small letters under it say Randus means. <laughs> Scandal limit. Scandal, Scandalala, Randus and Scrand Scrandaball. <laughs> um, so she's like, yeah, but I'm just working on not being a dox in everyone else's fights. I used to think it was my superpower to call people under shits, but it's just not how this. And at some point... I have to practice forgiveness. I cannot wear my traumas like a badge of honor forever. For example, I'm triggered and traumatized. I was like, you just said triggered. <laughs> I don't think you're allowed to, to talk about not wearing your trauma as a bandage anymore. You've said triggered five times this episode. This was actually a major step for Lala to realize that she doesn't actually have to step in and call people on their shit every single second. I think that maybe now that she has a podcast, she has realized, oh, you don't have to step in. You just have to have a podcast <laughs> and talk about people on your podcast and it's just as fun and rewarding um yeah uh, so lala's like yeah i didn't mean to have you abandon tom but come on you just chase everyone you know it's how my dad was and people just bulldozed, bulldozed over him and the stress of it truly i believe it killed my dads so i want you to do you know do things for you for once. It's like you're talking to one of the most selfish people on this show. I know. Okay? Like, can we not? His wife just left him because he's a selfish piece of shit. Can we stop acting like Tom Schwartz is also not a selfish piece of shit? Just because he walks around talking in a baby voice does not make him not a selfish piece of shit. But I also know Lala now, and I know what she's doing, and I like it. This is Lala where she's just resetting everybody and getting Betty, everybody back in place so that she has people to yell at. Because if everyone's mad at you and no one's talking to you, who are you going to yell at? You know, you got to people have people standing in front of you to yell at. And she also knows, I mean, here's the thing that I have been the biggest Lala fan. She has also driven me absolutely nuts. But one thing you can never take away from Lala is she knows how to play the game. And she is, she's like Lisa. She's like, we have a show to shoot here. So we have to start like, I'm just, I'm just going to suck it up and try to make things nice with Schwartz. Hello there. This is a two part recap. Okay. This is, 
the end of part one. So thank you so much for listening to this. Uh, just come back a little later for part two. Watch What Crappens would like to thank its premium sponsors. Ain't no thing like Allison King. Ashley Savoni, she don't take no baloney. Strolling the park with Caitlin Clark. She's not just a Sheila, she's a Daniela. Itchels. Erin McNicholas, she don't miss no trickleus. She's never scary, it's the Green Fairy. Jamie, she has no last namey. Hava Nagila Weber. Know your worth with Jason Kurth. She's the wind beneath our Jennifer Wing. Sip some scotch with Jessica Trotch. She's always supplying, it's Kelly Ryan. Kristen the Piston Anderson. Let's give a kisserino to Lisa Lino. Megan Berg, you can't have a burger without the Berg. The Bay Area Betches. Betches. And our super premium sponsors. Somebody get us 10 cc's of Betsy MD. We're taking the gold with Brenda Silva. Let's get real with Caitlin O'Neill. Don't get salty with Christine Pepper. Can't have a meal without the Emily Sides. Nobody holds a candle to Jamie Kendall. She's not harsh. She's Jill Hirsch. She's a little bit loony. Junie. My favorite Murdo, Karen McMurdo. We love him madly. It's Kyle Pod Chadley. Let's go on a bender with Lauren Fender. We want to hang with Liz Lang. The incredible edible Matthew sisters. Give him hell, Miss Noel. She's the queen bee. It's Sarah Lemke. Shannon out of a cannon, Anthony. Let's take off with Tamla Plain. She's quite the catch. It's Victoria Cotchett. She ain't no shrinking Violet Kuchar. We love you guys. Hey, Prime members, you can listen to Watcher Crappens ad free on Amazon Music. Download the Amazon Music app today. Or you can listen ad free with Wondery Plus in Apple Podcasts. Before you go, tell us about yourself by completing a short survey at wondery.com/survey.